So we're starting with zipper pocket. So two zipper pocket pieces. If your fabric is directional, make sure that it's the right way up and then we're going to flip them over. On the bottom, from the bottom, we're going to measure at three quarters of an inch. And this will create a nice folded edge on our turning gap later. So once you've got that line, we're going to fold up the raw edge to meet that line and give them a press. Like that. Oop. And we just need one of them for the next part. we're going to draw our box for our zipper hole now this is the easiest easiest way that I do my zipper boxes so about three quarters from the top three eighths below that three quarters in from each side. I don't have to faff about with centering the box. I know that that is just right. And no matter what size my zip pocket is, it's going to be good and perfect. Well, three quarters down, three eighths below that, three quarters in from the sides. Beautiful box. Grab one of your line body pieces. I'm going to put these right sides together. And this needs to be centered and one and a half inches down from the top edge. Let's see what we've got there. I've got everything on my magnetic tray, a bit of everything. <clears throat> so we're going to sew these together on top of our box. So if you've got these lines that extend like me, don't worry about them. We're just worrying about the rectangle box. So sew them together on top. I'm actually just going to swap to a lighter thread for this one. Oops. Forgot to press record after I changed my thread. Whoopsie daisy. But I have, it's hard to see, but I have sewn the rectangle. Now inside your box, you will see a shape. On the instructions that looks a little bit like like that this is our cutting line fold this in half first to get our first cut And I'm going to fold 
follow the lines. So cut to the triangle and then cut into the corners. Try not to go too close that you snip your stitches. I find using scissors like these that aren't sharp on the ends much better. And I can't get too close then. Like so. And then we need to post this through the hot wall. So what I like to do is press with the iron first, so press this all in, this helps get a nice crisp edge. Excuse me. And then post it through here, all of it, all of it, all of it. Roll the seams between your fingers, helps get a nice edge. And give it another press and this will appear on the reverse so I'm going to do mine neatly now and I'll come back like that Ooh. so we've got this lovely hole now to put our zipper behind I am going for bright blue to try and match my fabrics and this needs to go behind the hole obviously with the zipper pull in it so I'm going to put the pull on the left if you wish You can use a bit of tape, so I've got this really thin tape here to help with your zipper. I always worry about the tape showing, but I think this is Thin enough. So you don't want anything too thick because when you stick down your zipper, you'll have double sided tape still visible. Now, I never ever use tape, I normally just sew it and hope for the best. But I've, I will admit, I've gotten quite sloppy with my zippers lately. So, I am going to stick mine down. Now I stick where I want, I'm going to ooh, slide across my pole. Right, and I'm going to sew these together on the outside of the box, a top stitch width in, regular stitch length. There we go, lovely.
beautiful tip. I think I should do that more often, really. Now, lining body is wrong side up so we can see this pocket piece. I'm going to grab our remaining zipper pocket piece and these are right sides together matching up the folded bottom edge I'm using clips if you are using pins just make sure that you're only pinning the pocket pieces together not the lining I'm going to sew these together quarter inch three eighths honestly it really doesn't matter what seam allowance you use on this one but i like to sew mine this way so that i can see the zipper pocket and i know that the lining body is out of the way i'm not going to sew through it so we're going to sew the three edges not the folded bottom edge. <clears throat> and that is our zipper pocket done for now. If you trim off, so if you use a zipper tape and you trimmed the tape Feel free to add fray stop if you wish. So that's that one done for now. We can do the slip pocket. So a little switcheroo. So on this one, I have instead of two lining pieces i've got one accent i've done that purely because it's hard to see what i'm doing otherwise and i like it so i've got one accent piece so that when i lay the pocket you can see me what i'm up to i have totally lazy interface this one and i missed a whole chunk out but it's canvas i'm cool with that I'm not worried so don't judge me I'm gonna lay these right sides together if you're using directional fabric just make sure that it's the right way up and what we're going to do is sew around them so just sew them together but we're going to leave this gap at the bottom enough that you can get your hand in a bit like that sew them together using seam allowance all around not including the gap i'm going to switch back to my regular foot like so so again i've used the light thread so it's hard to see but i've sewn them together and i've left this turning gap before i turn this right side out however i am going to trim the corners to reduce some bulk like that and turn it right sides out. Then use anything you've got to hand. You don't need a fancy turning tool. I have a crochet hook, even though I've never crocheted. Normally I just use a blunt pencil, but
we go. So push down the corners, I roll the seams. And when I go to press, I just want to tuck these in and press and try my best to get this in a nice line. This is at the bottom edge. So this will be at the bottom of the bag. So if you can't get it ruler straight, don't stress. Don't spend 10 minutes trying to get it ruler straight. Just get it as straight as you can. Like that. That's not bad actually. Not bad, not bad. I am going to change my web thread a minute. like that so I've got that pretty not bad at all pretty good so I've got my turning gap at the bottom here I'm going to actually top stitch across this top edge here it helps keep the fold but also we're attaching it to the bag around three sides it kind of completes the look Grab your remaining lining body piece. This one is two and a half down from the top and centered. Something like that. And pop in a few pins just to hold it in place. Now, when I've pressed my turning gap just now, it has kept its shape pretty well. If you are concerned, you can add just a few more pins in here. Just take them out as you're sewing, obviously. But I'm going to sew down here, across the bottom, up the top. This will then close up our turning gap. If now you wish to add a pen pocket, pen pockets are pretty handy, measure in one and a half inches from the side, draw a line with um, fabric marker or washi tape, sew a row of stitches. Also, if you're worried about your pocket being gaping, so opening up when it's in the bag, what you can do is sew a little triangle in the corner. And this is what I'm actually going to do. Just a little triangle here. You don't need to draw it on. I'm just kind of showing you what I'm doing. So I'm going to sew down here, up and across. Just a little triangle. And that will be enough not to jeopardise the width of the pocket in case anyone wants to shove anything in. But enough just to stop it opening up. So 
So there we go. Nothing major. Just enough to stop the pocket from gaping open. And that's our two pockets. Done, diddly done. We can move on to the zipper bridge. I've got my zip. And I've already put my zipper end on. So I've got these cool metal ones. If you don't have a zipper end, I do have a guide on how to make your own out of fabric. So that is in the guides um, folder, the playlist, as YouTube calls it. Have a look in there if you haven't got one of these. But take it from me, put your zipper on. Especially if you're using continuous tape before putting the end on. Trust me on that one. So when both are on, you're going to take this open end. So just make sure your zipper is the same length, that you don't have one side longer than the other. And we're going to measure from this open end one inches and mark it just on this outside edge and yes i am using the biro rebel so where this marker is fold back your zipper tape I'm actually going to put a pin in mine because I find this easiest. So fold it back. Make sure that sides of your tape are nicely matched. Pin. To hold this fold, we're going to sew down the sides just a couple of stitches, about a quarter inch. Don't need anything huge, quarter inch will be absolutely fine. Like that. Just gonna cut away any straggly bits. Take out the pins. Then this fold here, bring it up to meet your tape. So we're kind of folding zipper tape at a 90 degree angle. Just going to pop a pin in here, or you can use a clip, whatever you want to do. That tape is at a 90 degree angle. It looks a bit funny because I've warped it with the pin. And that's our fin on a clip. Right, and the same again. Take this fold that we've made, bring it up to the zipper tape. Beautiful 90 degree angle. Just have a look to check they're even and on the edge and the side edge here I'm just going to base them together to keep this lovely fold that we've made like that If you can't get them at perfect angles, don't worry, just make sure that they're somewhat the same. Just have a check. Do they match up? Yes, they do. 
It's pretty darn lush. Pretty lush. Right, so that zipper is done. We need to just get our bridge ready. I've got two pieces of accent fabric. Mine are non-directional, so it doesn't matter which way I'm doing this. But if you have got a directional fabric and it's running that way, just check that the print runs opposite ways. Okay? And then we're going to flip them over. So you would flip, flip. From this right side short end, we're going to measure in three quarters of an inch. So that when we fold, we'll get our three eighths inch seam. As you guessed it, we're going to be folding this edge in to meet that marker. Like that. And the same with the lining. So mine, they both triangles run that way. Obviously, you don't really see the lining, so it's not a huge, huge thing if they go opposite ways. It's mainly on the accent pieces because you do see those. Flip them over again from this right side edge. Measure. Now, if your fabric allows, you can press these folds. So I'm going to press the lining. And then on these accent pieces, because I've got faux leather, I'm going to bring back this double-sided tape, the really thin stuff. There we go. So they're folded. I'm just going to press the lining. Right, so we've got our pieces folded lovely. I'm going to keep the lining ones wrong side up and I'm going to flip these back right side up. So accent right side up. Just check that you still have the folds on this side. All good. I'm going to start with this one piece. On this top edge, measure in from the short end three quarters of an inch. And mark it within the seam allowance. This is where we want to put our zipper. So the zipper goes right side down. And I know this all looks backwards and you might be thinking, why not start with the lining? I like to start with the outer. If you're gonna measure anything, measure the bit that you're gonna see. So we do all the measurements on here, then we know that this is all funny. If anything else stretches, we're not worried. This is the bit we see. So my tape is butted up to this marker that we've made. Uh, I'm just going to pop a few clips in here. I'm going to base them together within the seam allowance. So I will switch back over to my narrow foot.
place them together all the way across when you get to the edge you can stop because we're just basting the pieces together Basted together, grab on your lining pieces and then lay them together, matching up these folded edges. So make sure that you've got the folds together. And clip, 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 or pin, pin, pin. only along this long side that we've got the zipper in and the short end that doesn't have the fold now i'm actually going to flip them over to sew them and what i'm also going to do is in this one corner i am going to draw just mark where my seam allowance is. So when I sew, 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 I know that this is my point to pivot and go up. This helps me make sure that they both end up the same length. So this is why I sew, I mark on the side that you see for the accent piece and I also sew on the accent piece. Then I know what I'm doing. So again, because I flipped it over, I'm going down the long side, using seam allowance, this zipper side, and down this short unfolded edge. done my little sewing I haven't sewed this folded edge and I haven't sewn this long edge here this corner cut it off cut it off if you want to trim down some of this feel free if you feel it needs it add some brace stop But showing it like it was, zipper facing down, this is what yours should look like now. And I'm just going to fold these right side out. Just so it is out of the way of our next bit. If you want to press it now, press it now. I'm going to press mine at the same time, so I'll just clip them so they're out of the way. So, same again, but opposite. So, still right side um, facing down. Mine is just kind of stuck, hang on. And I've got my outer piece still right side up. We haven't turned it anyway. I've still got the folded edge on the right. On the bottom edge this time, from the short end, mark in three quarters of an inch from the seam allowance. The same again, we're matching the tape up here, butting it up to our marker just like we did. a couple of clips and you guessed it we're gonna base them together so within the seam allowance 
baste these two pieces together. Like that. And grab our lining piece, doo -doo -doo. right sides together, matching up the folded edge. Clippity clips, or pins. And as I did before, I'm just going to turn this over. seam allowance in the corner so that I know where to pivot my needle. Sew these together along the long side with the zipper part in, up the short unfolded side. Leave open, leave open. Then using a seam allowance. Again, I'm going to cut the bulk off this corner, trim that down if you want, turn it right side out. I'm going to get my crochet hook again and put it right into that corner. If your fabric allows, you can give it a press. If yours is like mine and it's not cooperating, you may have to clip it like I've done. Just to stop everything having a party while you're trying to sew it. it down there if you wish clip the ends but our main aim now is top stitching we are top stitching a rectangle so we're joining these folded edges together now we are top stitching alongside the zipper up here back along a nice rectangle both of these do your best to make them behave I am just going to squish mine and adjust as I go. That is the plan and I am sticking with it. There we go. Aren't you glad I sped that up? Ah. Sneaking. Right. Oh my gosh. 
hopefully, fingers crossed, they end up being the same. Da -da -da -da. We are so close to the finish now. So close. But grab your lining body with the zipper pocket in it. Remove all the stray threads that you've just plopped everywhere. Oh my gosh. And place your zipper bridge on it, accent side up. And centre along your top edge. Now I'm looking at that, that looks pretty good to me. I'm happy with that. If you want to measure, please do. And you guessed it, we're going to baste them together. I'm just going to switch back to my regular foot uh, based within the seam allowance like that and grab one of your upper lining pieces Anyone? I'm going to flip these, move the zip out of the way. So the flat edges are together and the curved edge is towards the bottom. And this time we're going to sew them together using a regular seam allowance. And once you've done that, take this upper lining piece and flip it upwards. So all the seam allowances are still facing upwards and then we can top stitch on the top side of our seam to hold all those seam allowances in place. open up the zipper fully because we need to do the same again but on our other lining piece so shimmy that over sorry this is really noisy and rotate this so that you can now as we did same again center along the top edge raw edges together and just move it over slightly just a dinky bit and based base base based like that so exactly the same again and grab your last upper lining piece i'm going to do this all in one go so you've got to kind of jiggle this so it's not in your way clip 
them together. I'm going to sew them together using regular seam allowance. Push this upper lining piece upwards and top stitch. Just make sure that your zipper stays out of the way. There we go. So I have two that look the same. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close my zipper halfway. Halfway is fine. Just so I know that when we're doing the constructing that nothing is twisted. And lay your lining pieces right sides together. Tuck in this tail. Tuck him in, out of the way. And match, match up your side edges. If you can, try and match up the seams where you join the uh, upper lining to the lining body. And you notice I'm only clipping the sides because we're going to leave the bottom open. That's our turning gap. It's a pretty big turning gap. But it makes things so much easier. So, sew these together down the sides using regular seam allowance. going to actually just trim oh my gosh in a really wonky way my seam allowance again I'm just leaving that little bit at the top and I find it easier to trim it now rather than later Turn your whole lining right side out. So just open your zip fully and turn it right side out. Locate your outer wherever you might have put it. Ooh. Line is here. And I'm actually just going to move my camera a second so that I can give you a bit more view. So I've raised the camera up because I've actually raised up my machine for the next bit. I don't have a removable bed and I hate having to sew from the inside of a bag. So this way I can just pretend that I've got a removable bed. So pop your straps into your outer, tuck them in, out of the way and take your lining, pop it inside your outer, doesn't matter which way because both of the outer pieces are the same and what we're going to do is match up the side seams Open them up 
and best you can match them up, pin them together. If you kind of pull on the side, you'll see the outer and lining kind of come together. You want to match them together, match up these curves. Oh, grab some clips. And then we can sew these together all the way around this top edge using seam allowance. So I'm just going to pop mine over my raised bed. You might have to sew from the inside like this if you've got an industrial inner table. Whichever works for you. Like that. Now here comes the supity dupity part. Well, actually, not yet. I lie. First, we need to clip the curves. Clip the curves. So I'm not clipping any support stitch, like major structural stitches. So I'm going to avoid this part here. And if you have a centre seam, avoid that. I'm just pinking the curvy bits. If you haven't got pinking shears, you could cut little notches. Oh my gosh. These pinking shears are terrible. I haven't found a good pair yet. Honestly, I've got so many, it's unbelievable. Curves clipped. Now for the cool part, the turning. We have got this massive turning gap. Look how super duper that was. So we're at this stage now. I'm not going to top stitch just yet. I'm going to finish off the lining. So open up the zipper pocket, reach through, and grab the bottom of the lining and pull it through. Okay. 
completely through so it's wrong side out. You need to be able to see the cut out corners and both sides of the base of the lining. Then as if we were making it normally we would sew the bottom of the lining up first. So obviously we already did the sides earlier on. I'm going to sew up this bottom edge using a regular seam allowance. Yes, I forgot to change my thread, but it's in a very unnoticeable area, so I'm good with that. Then do the corners, so same again, pull the lining pieces apart, bring the side seam and the seam of the base together. Don't have to worry too much about opening the seams. To make sure that you've got the nice flat edge there to sew together using seam allowance. I'm going to do this one as well. Side seam to meet base. So the raw edges using seam allowance. And then post it back through the zipper pocket. And you've just completed your lining. Easy peasy. Right, I'm not sewing up the, po the pocket just yet because we want to do the top of the bag. So I'm reaching through. I'm pushing out the curves and the edges. Shovel that back in there for a sec. Once you've reached through the pocket and you've pushed out the curves, right, you need to roll this between your fingers. And what you're trying to achieve is from the outside, you don't want to see the lining. The seam needs to be on top. in as many clips as you want or none whichever Once you've done that and you're happy with how it looks, you can sew them together, top stitching this time. I like to do mine at about a quarter inch, personal preference, just because it's the size of my foot.
There we go. Tidy it up in a sec. And last but not least, closing up our pocket, our final job. We pull the zipper pocket pieces out. Match up the folded edges. And then sew them together using seam allowance. Um, not seam allowance at all. Top stitch, regular stitch length. I changed my thread colour. I thought I'd better add as it is a visible part when you look in the pocket. And all we need to do is pop this into our pocket, zip it up. I like to give it a little shake. And that is Sophia done. Ta -da! There she is. Beautiful feet, lovely straps, zipper bridge. I've got a couple of variations to show you. In the pattern, I've done it the opposite way. So this one is all colour with a plain connectors and strap. This one I've done all plain with colour connectors and strap. I really like this way. And this one has the centre seam, whereas this one is just a one piece. And then this one is all faux leather. As you can see, I've added more rivets for detail. Also, one more change. I didn't do a zipper bridge on this one. So I've made the zipper the same way, you know, folding the ends. But I've actually just sandwiched it between the lining body and lining upper piece. And then about two inches from the this end with the pull, I just dropped it down out of the way. So when I was sewing, it's not. Let me see. That is in the Harlequin tote pattern. I do construct the zipper slightly different, but it is the same method. And it works just the same. Either way, this way is a bit quicker, but with the bridge, it does look really nice. So lots of lovely ways to make this bag. There we go. Ta-da! Any questions, any problems, please pop me a comment, pop me a message. If you want to know where I get any of my hardware from or my fabrics if you want to know any more absolutely i'll pop the links to the facebook group and to etsy in the description below as well but anything please just ask there we go sophia Ta -da -da.